Hey guys, welcome back to Montevue. Today we're going to be going over part 2 of our Montevue Go mobile series, and this is going to cover the playback features as well as any options associated with that. Don't forget our part 1 covered all of the live view and a tutorial for that, and part 3 is going to cover all the settings for this application as well as any extra features not covered in parts 1 and 2. Alright, now that we're on the home screen, we're going to look for playback, it should be in the upper left corner. And once we select that, it's going to bring us to this playback screen. So first things first, we need to load a camera to watch. So we're going to press this plus button up top, and it's going to show us a list of NVRs and cameras that have been added to this phone. Just keep in mind that if you guys have an NVR, like I do here, you do have to select this little arrow to reveal all of the cameras that are linked to that NVR. So once I've done that, I'm going to go down and select our parking cam. When you select a camera, it will automatically load the current date and it's going to start it at midnight of that day. So when I load it, it's going to load up here and it's going to bring me to midnight. And you can see that as it plays, I need to confirm the correct time in the camera view, which it looks good here. So in order to scroll to a different time, you simply just have to move your finger on the timeline and slide that playhead left or right. And then I'm going to bring it all the way to almost my current time. And you'll see here it's about 8.30 in the morning and so my blue line ends when my recording ends. So that is the difference between recorded footage and non-recorded footage is this blue marking on the timeline. Okay, now that we have the timeline movement down, let's go ahead and try to select another date. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little date where it says 2220407. Of course, that's today's date. We want to change that. So once we click on this, it's going to pull up a little calendar. And you've got a few options here to interpret this. Uh, you've got the blue symbols that looks like a little blue film reel icon. And any day that has that means that you have a recording on this particular channel for that particular day. Now I just plugged this camera in about yesterday afternoon, so I don't have too much time, but uh, this is good for the demonstration. So below the calendar, you're going to see the different types of recording that we can isolate for the timeline. Generally, I recommend doing all types this way you're not missing anything and you're seeing the whole spectrum of what you have recorded. But if you guys are looking for something specific like motion only, maybe you've got a smart cam that's got AI and so it's got human detection or vehicle detection, you can select any one of these features and it will isolate those types of events on your timeline just to sort of skip through all of the dud footage or the stuff where there's nothing going on. So uh, I'm going to select all just for the purposes of this demo. And then I can select a date. Now, two ways you can do that is you can use this little scroll bar, or you can simply just click right up here on the calendar and then go ahead and hit OK. So after I hit OK, it loads that particular day. And keep in mind, again, because I plugged this camera in at about 2 o'clock yesterday, it's going to start me at the beginning of that recording instead of midnight since there's no recordings for that. And just like before, I can scroll left and right to choose a different portion of the day. And as soon as I let go, it's going to play that portion of the footage. So that is the basics of selecting what footage you guys want to watch. All right, moving on to the icons and all of their functions. We're going to look at this upper row here. And starting with the play pause button, it uh, simply just pauses or plays your footage, just like so. Pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory right there. So this next icon is going to control the speed of the playback footage. Now you can increase it to about 8 times speed, but keep in mind most phones don't have the processing power and NVR does. So when it does speed up the footage, it tends not to do it as smooth as the NVR does where you're seeing every frame just quicker. Instead you're going to see more jumpiness where it jumps maybe 6-8 seconds at a time. So sometimes this feature can be useful, but also it can make it so it misses certain functions. Now inversely you can also slow this footage down. And because that uses a lot less processing power, it tends to be a lot more accurate on the phone. So to do that, you just simply just hit the minus button and you can go 0.5 or 0.25 speed and it plays it slow. The next icon here right in the center, this one's pretty useful. This is a frame by frame motion. So if you've got something really particular that happens really fast on your cameras and you're trying to isolate that moment, you can pause your play and then you can hit this button to skip just one frame ahead. And as you can see here as I do it, keep your eye on the plastic bag down below and you can see it moves just a hair with every press that I do. This next icon, the sound, this is going to play the audio that is recorded by your camera. By default it's going to be muted, but if you guys want to hear what's going on you can press that. 
In order to change the volume up or down, you want to press and hold on the image of the camera and then you can move your finger up or down in order to adjust that volume level like so. All right guys, final icon on this row. This is the orientation of your screen. So if you guys wanna make that video a little bit bigger, you can press this button and it'll turn your screen horizontal. The only negative of that is you do lose your icons. So this is very much a visual only type of function. But uh, in order to return to the icons in the regular view, you simply just have to turn your phone back to vertical and it should pop everything back onto the screen like normal. Okay, uh, the next row down, we are looking at the icon that looks like a photography camera. This one will take a screenshot of whatever piece of footage you have pulled up. So as soon as I press that, you'll see it saves right to the storage on my phone, and I can access that through the files of Montevideo. Go. Next one is the video recording feature. So any footage that you have playing, you can hit this button, it'll start a clip, and you can see that it shows recording in the upper left. I apologize, it's kind of white here, so it's hard to see. But as long as you have that indicator there, it is recording whatever footage you're currently looking at. So in order to stop that, you just press that button one more time. And just like the screenshot, it's going to save that footage right to the storage on your phone. And then, and then that's gonna allow you guys to send that off to whoever it needs or keep it for personal use. Okay, the next icon, this one's a little bit trickier. This one is if you wanna make a custom clip. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press this little scissors icon and it's gonna take you into this kind of edit mode. Okay, so for this example, I'm gonna try to take a clip that's roughly about six o'clock to 6.30. Say I had something go on during this time and I need to extract this footage to show to the police or whoever. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position my playhead just at the 18, maybe a little bit before. You can be a little bit more accurate. If you pinch in, you can actually zoom in on the timeline. And uh, once I've got that kind of picked out, I'm gonna hit this play button right here. And as soon as I do that, you'll see a little red line appear on the timeline. That indicates I've created my in point for my clip. Now to create an out point, you simply have to maneuver the playhead to that location. So I'm gonna go about 8.30. And then once I've got that, you gotta let it load into the image up top, wait till it's all loaded, and then you should have this opportunity to press this little stop button. So uh, the mobile application does limit you to half hour clips, and this is a good thing because if you guys were exporting to your phone constantly, you guys would run that storage out really, really quick. And before it exports, it's gonna ask me if my times look correct, just to confirm. And of course I hit okay, yes, looks good. And then it starts exporting that file straight to the storage on my phone. All right, this next button is the fisheye button. A lot like the live view, I have to load in the eyeball real quick, so excuse this little change on the screen here. But you'll see, once I load up an eyeball camera, I just had to plug one in for this demo, so I don't have that much recorded footage. But if you do pull up an eyeball camera, you can press this little button here, and it's gonna take you into the fisheye deep warp mode. This is probably my favorite feature. You can kind of sit here and fly around within the camera's view. And it's really useful for spotting all sorts of things that go on in that room where the eyeball is. In order to get out of the eyeball view, we just have to hit that little button there and it should take us right out. So that is the eyeball feature. It's available in live view or playback. Okay, the last little icon just below the fish eye and next to the date. This one is kind of a weird one. Uh, when you click it, it's basically a different way of looking at your timeline. Instead of looking at a timeline from 0 to 24, it breaks up your recorded footage into hour clips. And so you can kind of scroll through the whole day and then select a certain hour and it'll just pull that up for playing and watching and all sorts of editing that you can do. So it's kind of a weird little thing. Sometimes it can be helpful if you've got smart features on, it'll isolate those smart events and put them into clips already for you. So lots of interesting uses for this button and that is basically what it does. In order to return, we just have to go back and it pops us right back into this uh, playback menu. Okay, now the final icon. This one's in the upper right corner. This is an interesting button as well. What this does is it allows you to choose multiple cameras for playback simultaneously. In order to do that, you're just gonna click that button up top and then it's gonna give you your list of cameras. You can select up to four at the same time. And then the final result is that it loads up both cameras. Whichever one I wanna control the timeline for, they will be independent. I just have to click the actual image up top and then it should let me scroll through the timeline just like normal. You guys can double click to make one full screen if you've got something particular going on. And it's gonna allow you to go up to four cameras doing playback at once. So pretty useful little feature there.
All right, guys, that is all the info I've got for the playback section of Montevue Go Mobile. If you guys have any further questions on this portion or on part one, feel free to call the tech support line. The guys are here Monday through Friday to answer any questions you've got. Stay tuned for part three. That is where we're going to cover the more intricate settings of this application, as well as things like the doorbell and favorites menu. So again, look ahead for part three coming up. And if you guys didn't already, check out part one where we cover all the aspects of the live view. Thanks for choosing one of you guys. We'll see you next time.